Welcome to the Trap House Cousins. It's your favorite cousins, favorite cousin, cousins. You've been on my mind. Cousins, one of a kind. <laughs> happy Sunday, happy Easter, happy Ishtarian. I'm saying the Ishtarian day. Don't think that's a real word, but I make things up. Remember that this is just a floating rock hurtling through space. It's flat, so it's really like a disc or a CD. You know, hey, I don't get too caught up in all the shit. I just do me. Just do you and, and, and love your life the way that it is and get on board and get on flow with that. Any hooters. Today, we're going to talk about how Easter is connected to Ishtar. I'll be reading from my favorite encyclopedia, the Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets. Um, I got this book recommendation from the great Bobby Hemant. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, misinformation about him online, about him being on the other side, being an ancestor. Now, he's not. I'm subscribed to his Patreon. I've been on his Patreon for years. Um, whoever runs his Patreon uh, notifies us of him and his wife's birthday every year, which is just a couple of weeks apart from each other in November. Um, you know, he, the person who runs the page is always sure to let us know that he's in good health um, and he's fine. So I do know that a few years ago he did have a stroke, but there has not ever been any confirmation that he transitioned and the person who is, you know, behind his books and bookings still say that he's here and well. So I just want to clear that up because I am a child of him. So I don't want y'all to be wishing death on my nigga. OG Bobby Hemet has recommended a lot of the books that I read, um, a lot of the books that are in my library and that have transformed my life. So if you don't know, now you know, get on board with him as well. All, a lot of his teachings are found on YouTube. Um, and because he has given so much to the culture and to the community over the last like 30 plus years, I always want to make sure that I am being a patron, like paying something. Because there's no way I will ever be able to repay him for all of the knowledge that he has given to us. So anyway, Easter. Springtime sacrificial festival named for the Saxon goddess Yostra or Ostara, a northern form of Astarte. Her sacred month was Istra Monith, the moon of Eostra. Saxon poets apparently knew Eostra was the same goddess as India's great mother Kali. Bewolf spoke of Ganges waters, whose flood rivers ride down into the unknown sea near Eostra's far home. The Easter bunny was older than Christianity, it was the moon hair sacred to the goddess in both Eastern and Western nations, recalling the myths of Hathar or Astarte, who laid the golden age. And remember I had said a couple of weeks ago during the Libra full moon eclipse that every goddess is connected to the moon goddess, which is connected to the Venusian, which is all the same energy of Hathor being able to birth. You know, Hathor, it could be represented as a cow or a woman with a cow's head or with the horns. Um, and cows, the, the milky way we, you know, are fueled on our mother's milk. Humans are truthfully allergic to any other type of milk because the milk that we receive from our mothers comes directly from source and that's it. We don't need no other dairy substance in that source. But anyway, um, Hathor, Hathor Astarte, who laid the golden egg of the sun, Germans used to say that the hare would lay eggs for good children on Easter's Eve. Like all churches, movable feasts, Easter's showed its pagan or origin in a dating system based on the old lunar calendar. It is fixed as the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. I told you guys that last week. Formerly the pregnant phase of Yostre, passing into the fertile season. The Christian festival wasn't called Easter until the goddess's name was given to it in the late Middle Ages. And then it talks about the menstrual calendar. And that's what I said. I'm going to have an extended version on that on Patreon. So stay tuned for that. Um, it goes on to talk about how the Irish would keep their dates separate for Easter. Um, and for Eostre and Britain would keep the old date of the Eostre celebration. Persians began their solar new year at the spring equinox. Um, later in the 18th century, they would start following the um, occasion of having the colored eggs. Eggs have always been symbols of rebirth, which is why Easter eggs were usually colored red, the life color, especially in Eastern Europe. Russians used to lay red Easter eggs on graves to serve as resurrection charms. In Bohemia, Christ was duly honored on the Easter Sunday, his pagan rival on Easter Monday. 
two different ones, two different celebrations that also teaches us, you know, the duality. But anyway, <laughs> village girls, like ancient priestesses, sacrificed the Lord of death and threw him into the water singing, death swims in the water, spring comes to visit us with eggs that are red, with yellow pancakes. We carry death out of the village. We are carrying summer into the village. And it goes to talk about um, uh, a small building would have been erected and consecrated for the host within a priest was set in it from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. So this, there's the whole ritual there. Um, and again, it just goes back to the mother goddess. Now, I wanted to talk about Ishtar and her celebration. So Babylonian star, the great goddess, was um, who appears in the Bible as Ashtoreth, Asherah, or Esther. I've said that many times. I said that in my Esther uh, video. I said that in, I don't know, God has a wife for sure. I know I talked about God having a wife and his and, and her name being Asherah. The Asherah poles, it's always been proved that there are a duality of, of the gods. There's a monotheism going on here and the pathetic attempt to burn every structure of the feminine aspect of goddess down and make it not be part of memory is just crazy so anyway say it again babylonian star the great goddess who appears in the bible as asterith um and i think they even put asterith i think asterith is actually a man or maybe that's asher i'll have the answer when i come back next week asherah or esther the queen of heaven mentioned in jeremiah 44 19 she was also the great whore described in revelation 17 5 as the babylon the great the mother of harlots another of her titles was the goddess har who uh, called herself the compassionate prostitute men communed with her through sexual rites of harlot priestesses okay babylonian scriptures called ishtar the light of the world leader of hosts opener of the womb righteous judge lawgiver goddess of goddesses bestower of strength framer of all decrees lady of victory forgiver of sins much of the liturgical flattery addressed to god in the old testament was plagiarized from babylonian prayers to ishtar okay one of them and so then it goes on to talk about a couple of them i'm going to just share one who does make the green earth spring up mistress of mankind who has created everything who does guide all the cre uh, creatures mother ishtar Whose power no God can approach, a prayer will I utter, may she do unto me what seemed good unto her, or my mistress, make me know my deed, establish for me a place of rest, absolve all of my sins, lift up my face. Okay, and it goes on to talk about a couple of them. But, um, Easter being directly associated with um, Ishtar is also in these energies, so. Let me read. Okay, I had to read from my page. You know how sometimes you like, I knew I put a bookmark there, but I had to read through this long chapter to get back to where it was because sometimes I don't put on my highlight marks. Anyways, a, a, a brief preview for the menstrual calendar um, that also talks about how these holidays line up with the woman's body in the woman's cycle. Okay. Christian holy days were copied from pagan ones, displaced by 12 hours in their solar reckoning. Therefore, the older heathen version of each festival was celebrated on the eve of its Christian counterpart. From this arose the so-called devilish rites of May Eve or Midsummer's Eve or L Lama's Eve or All Hall Hallows Eve or Christmas Eve, which we, which were taken from the pagan Yule and to late date were still called the Night of the Mother. Witch prosecutors pretended that witches copied their sabbats from Christian feast days in deliberate mockery of the church. But in fact, the copying, copying had all gone in the other direction. The church took over the pagan feast of Halloween, May Day, Lamas, Imbolg, Midsummer, Easter, Yule, and so on, then claimed to have invented them. However, the two rival festivals on the same day, the Christian one was invariable, the newcomer. May Eve was the Saxons, I'm not even going to try to pretend to pronounce that, Walpurgisnacht, 
The South Beltane announcing the Merry Month of Sexual License and Wearing of Green in honor of the Earth's new spring garment. The occasion was marked by pagan ceremonies in the late 16th century. Midsummer's Eve merged with St. John's Day, but the celestial rites remained more pagan than Christian. Lama's Eve was a witch's great Sabbath Sabbat because it was formerly the pagan's feast of bread or half mass. Wow. In the honor of Corn Mother, Halloween, all uh, or all Hallows or all souls, Eve, from the Celtic Shaman or Feast of the Dead, when pagan ancestors came forth from their fairy mounds, the Christians from the demons who attended the witches' feast. So, again, all of that just to say, it's all connected. But you know what, what I'm learning more about this in this book is it talks about 13 months and 13 moons. And things being done on the 13. And I know that Ethiopia is like the only country that still has the 13. They have the 13 month calendar. So, I don't know. But we're here for it. We're here for it. Like I said, I'll go more into depth in that. Um, and it's just because I love to educate people on things that they may not be aware of. Things that may not, you know, you may have been taught a falsehood. I know I was taught false things. Man. I know I was taught a false thing. Um, and then... You know, not everyone is here to actually go and retrieve the information. Some of us are just here to have the information and share the information. So, let us see. Y'all, let me tell you something. If you have learned nothing else under this eclipse, if you learned nothing else from your, from your cousin, y'all, please back up your computers, your written things. Last week, I had my notes, how I have every week. I had everything ready. I did all the video recordings. Thank God. I did all the video recordings because I had my guidance. Then I had my guidance. Y'all, I somehow deleted all of the shit that I needed to send in my newsletter. So I sent what I needed. You know, I sent what I can remember off the dome. I let... Some other stuff just kind of flow, you know, but I was like, oh my gosh, it was deleted. And so I basically had to tell them on the newsletter, on the newsletter that, you know, it was deleted. So you're going to have to go listen to YouTube and Spotify in order for you to get any Trapshology of the week <laughs> because it got deleted. So I just, I just deleted it again. That's why I'm retrieving it. That's why I haven't started talking. I deleted what I was supposed to be saying again. Mercury retrogrades tomorrow. <laughs> Mercury retrograde in Aries is tomorrow. So just don't act like I never told you because I did. All right. It's Ishtarian day. I already said that. So happy Easter. Happy Ishtar. Give gratitude to the mother energies of your life. The mother goddess, your mother figures, your real mother, mother nature. Uh, if you're adopted, your birth mother, because she could have made another decision and you could have just been off into the distance of somewhere. We never would have known you. You never would have been here. Now, see, this ain't going to be able to happen. That we will need from the notes to stay illuminated. Okay. All right. Give gratitude to the universe for your period of rebirth and regeneration and the opportunity to do it again. Because, you know, we are we are starting this season with so many people who did not even complete a last season. So we always want to give gratitude for life. And I know that there are some people who are like, well, you know, I just don't want to be on earth and I'll be happy when I don't when I don't have to um, reincarnate here. But I'm a firm believer, you know, I do past life readings. I interpret past life uh, in your birth chart. I'm a firm believer that as if you're one of those people who just hates earth and you don't want to be here, you will be here. You'll be here post haste next time. You'll be here. Real quick, then you'll be in the work and worse conditions than you are already are, because you should have just absorbed the lesson. So anyway, um, we are here in the energy of new life, in between receiving a bridge to the past and a Delorean ride to the future. If y'all know, y'all know. I'm an '80s baby, so Back to the Future all day, all of them, every last one of them. I'm happy they haven't remade it. Do not remake it. Don't remake it. I don't want to see a remake of Back to the Future. Leave Marty right where he at. Leave Doc. Right where he's at. Okay. Um, 
as we can see, Hollywood crumbling more and more every day. And that's all a distraction. I talk about it more on my Patreon um, because I learned a long time ago that you really have to be careful what you say in these public spaces. These public spaces are ran by, you know, you got people on here saying, oh, my op, my op, my op, but you're recording on the op's platforms. You're using the op's platforms. So if there are things that you really want to say, you need to build it and say it in spaces behind closed doors because some, some of y'all won't, um, you won't live through the smoke that it brings to your front door. You won't live through it. You won't be able to tolerate it. You won't be the same after it. And we we are not all built the same. And I got smoke that I was not prepared for, but I have good spiritual ancestral gu guidance and protection. So I came out of that shit on the other side, the good side. But the way that it can still impact my life today is crazy, right? So that's all I'll say about that. Um... If you've been following me on Instagram or even Twitter for long enough, you know, if you are on my Patreon, I've talked about it and it's not something that I like try to bring up too much because we live in a day and age when everybody wants to be a proud rebel. You know, you want to, you want to, again, rah, rah, my ops, but then come on your ops platforms and talk about, um, the ops secrets, right? And then think that the ops are not going to put an end to you telling their secrets on their platform and i come from a era where hope has a lot where he says when i was talking to instagram the last thing you wanted was your picture snapped i come from a, a an era where you really did not want it to be public knowledge or public information that you were bucking the system and if it was public information you didn't want to do it with your face and you didn't want to do it with your, you know, handle. You wanted that to be something separate from yourself because of the smoke that it can bring to you. And even I made the mistake of not, you know, <clears throat> crossing all those T's and dotting all those I's and got smoke brought to me. But that's why I'm able to sit here and say that. So um, I saw somebody get mad at Erica Badu a few years ago because they basically felt like she wasn't being militant or loud enough about whatever was going on at the time. And she said, I was young like y'all too. And I was militant and loud like y'all too. And that's when I was dumb. Because when you're emotional and you're loud, you show your op exactly how to find you and where to find you. We just talked about this last week. Familiars. The familiar knows you before you know you. So if you're telling your op where you're going, you're telling your op how mad you are. Hey, we're going to have a rally over here. Hey, come over to my page and watch me show you all the hidden secrets of the world over here. Many of the people who have done that, even as of recently, have gone, we won't say missing, but then people showed up on them. So you got to be careful. That's all I'm saying. You got to be careful. Everything ain't for everybody. Unfortunately, some of us have to learn it the hard way. But as we are on this... um crumble of Hollywood and we see what's happening on the main stage. I always say if the main stage and the big world is changing, your small world is changing too. So just as the enemies or the chaotic or the demons of Hollywood have been being exposed and they're crumbling and they're scattering like roaches, the same is happening with the enemies in our lives. And that's the beautiful thing. The same is happening with the faulty, with the misleading, with the manipulative. I always tell people that during eclipse season, if you've been doing any dirt, if you've been keeping up with any madness, it's coming for you during eclipse season. It's coming for the person who's doing it, even if it wasn't you, but it's coming for you. So you don't have to worry about getting back. I don't got to get my lick back. Eclipse season. We got two eclipse seasons a year. Depending on what side of the eclipse I'm on, I'm going to get my lick back because of the energy, right? So um, don't know who needed to hear that. The title of our energetic read this week is The Underhanded Will Not Go Unhandled. The Underhanded Will Not Go Unhandled. So if you feel like there's somebody who's been getting away with it, like why God, why ancestors, why you letting him get off with this? Why you letting him get away with this? Why you letting my baby daddy play off, play on my top? You know, got me out here looking bad. Why you letting that happen to me? You know, why are you letting my best friend lie and manipulate and, you know, whatever on me? Why are you letting this job, let this girl at this job make me look bad? Whatever it is you're going through, you may 
be questioning that right now. But eclipse season is working it out. Everything done in the dark will come to light. Okay. Um, so you just cling to the unchanging faith that I hope you've been developing prior to this page. Um, but definitely after the interaction with this page, I learned a long time ago that I am not for the group. I'm not for the collective. I'm from the group inside of the collective. So if there's 100 people in the room, only 50 people will hear me, which is fine because that's very protective energy. Uh, when I first started my journey and when I first realized that I was here to use my voice, uh, I was kind of intimidated and kind of sad if sometimes it wouldn't touch every person in the room or if it didn't reach more people. But then I learned that, again, you know, not everything is for everyone. So if you are on this page, know that you're energetically chosen. You have been put here. You have been directed here. Your highest self has helped you find this page. And I hope to see you on the tribe on Patreon where we really elevate. Okay. Um, Trapology of the week. Today, the moon is in Sagittarius, but it will be void tonight from 640-ish to about 1030-ish. And regardless if you celebrate Easter or any of these rituals, again, be grateful that you lived another season. You're here to start another season. Um, relish in the epoch of spring, the seasonal change of spring. Um, this is also a good day for you to get into your studies or pick up a book or, and you know, that's why I always try to do some type of reading on Sundays for my tribe, whether it's Patreon, Instagram, not so much. I just give them a reading on Friday uh, with the cards. And then especially here on the Trap House on YouTube, I try to share knowledge, you know, because this may be the only time that some of y'all or someone hears this type of information or reads this information or what have you. So today is a good day for studying. Tomorrow the moon will be in Capricorn. Um, when I was writing the notes, I heard, think of the master plan. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, uh, Rakim, I think. Uh, there might be some tension as you are moving in opposition to your purpose. Investigate the frustration and take cues from the universe for the gravitational pull um, that, it's, that it's sending you. You know, you can always change or you can always tell how the energy within you or around you changes by the shift within you and around you. Um, when you are energetically aligned, it's like a day where you're catching all the green lights on your way to work and, and you're on time. Like you were already ahead of schedule and then you're catching every green light on your way there. That's what it's like to be aligned. It's not to say that those yellow lights and the red lights aren't good and they're not beneficial and we don't need to slow down and we don't need to stop sometimes. But when you are really aligned, your manifestations are falling where you want them to, how do you want them to, your intentions. You really truthfully realize that things are always working in your favor, even when they're a little slow or even when they are catawampus, they are still working in your favor. Um, Tuesday, the moon will be in Capricorn again. Then it will be void from 1140 p.m. Now, the moon is going to go void at 1140 like three times in a row. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Ain't that crazy? And then it jumps back into whatever placement it's going to be in around 4.40 a.m. So uh, I heard picked up the pieces on Tuesday uh, in retrieving the remnants of the lunar eclipse. This is going to provide us the shards and stepping stones that we need to get to and through the solar eclipse. That's on April 8th. Uh, Wednesday, the moon will continue void position until 3 a.m. Then it goes void again at 11.40 p.m. that same night, but it spends the day in Aquarius, so we should pay attention to any impulses that we receive from the future. That's our higher self, our future self, showing us what we can be, who we can be. The, the most potent part of being a creator, a pioneer, a jet setter, uh, an innovator, is being able to hold on to that dream, even when it's not tangible, even when no one else believes it, even when sometimes you lose hope in it, but that's where the proof then comes in is when you can make it real until the end. Uh, one of my favorite movies, I don't like Tyler Perry and I don't really like, you know, movies where women are kind of like showing outrage, even though I'm outraged. I can be outraged. I'm just saying it's very stereotypical. But anyway, Acrimony is one of my favorite movies. And what I love most about that movie is it shows how he never gave up on his dream, no matter how crazy he looked to everybody else, how he ruined everybody else's life trying to maintain the dream. But it finally paid off. And it paid off in a very strange way. And I think they're coming out with an Acrimony too, so that's going to be great because Taraji should be dead. So I don't know why. I don't know what's going to happen. But, uh, 
he he held on to that dream and that purpose when nobody else did and then it finally paid off and so I always that's what I take from that movie among other things but I take that from it. like you will sometimes be so far ahead of the curve that you will have no one to look up to there will be no blueprint you will have nobody to say do you think this is right they don't fucking know they've never been there before but that is where you will have to trust in your faith you have to trust in your download you have to trust in what the most high god and goddess have given you to retrieve at that point um the moon on wednesday is also going to be you know coupling with wherever pluto is in your in your chart so that's already been activating your future self since january so it's really important that you um, leave space for that resonance, leave space for that to actually happen, or you're going to find yourself disappointed. 20 years, talking about 20 years. Um, <clears throat> Thursday, the moon will be back in Aquarius around 4.45 a.m. after being void, again, from 11.40ish. Um, and it's the same energy of what I just said. You have to maintain the focus of the, of the vision, even when it doesn't seem real. Friday will be 11 days past the full moon lunar eclipse, and we should fast and reflect on what we learned in that transit. Um, we are on the roller coaster climb. I hate roller coasters. Don't like roller coasters. Don't like adrenaline seeking. Done it before though. We're on the roller coaster climb. You know, we know that we're getting ready to get to the peak of this roller coaster. And what happens at the peak of the roller coaster? Your stomach starts to get, you know, a little twisty and turny. You're like, oh my God, it's gonna go fast. I'm like, well, if we fall off these tracks, that's why I don't get off. That's why I don't get off. I think, what if we get stuck at the top? I saw my cousin get stuck at the top of a roller coaster. Or what if we crash to the bottom of this motherfucker and just unhinges? But anyway, so many things can be going through your head. But either way, you're in the roller coaster. You can't leave. You can't get off. The only way up was the way that you came. The only way down is the way that you came up. So um, pay attention to what is being you know, brought to the surface for you right now because you're being prepared for it. Now, Saturday, the moon will be in Pisces. Friday, the moon will be in Pisces. And Saturday, you want to repeat the same things that you are doing on Friday. Just get ready. Get ready because this is sh the shift of a lifetime. And I will say that with every eclipse because they are. They truthfully change everything that you're going through. And will go through. So... Solar Eclipse readings are available on the site now. Um, they are video recordings. This flew out. That looks like two sun heads to me. And it's the illumination of the mother and child, so it's the birth. Um, they are available on the white website. Link in bio, link in description box, wherever you happen to see this. Link on the actual button that you're pushing if you're in a new one. Okay, so we have the Empress was the first energy. Um, nurturing ourselves through this process of rebirth. The, the three, you know, I know in religion they say it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But on my previous podcasts on Spotify, like last year sometime, I talked about how the Holy Spirit is actually the feminine energy. They, I don't know why they can't just say the Mother, the Holy Mother. I mean, y'all say that this nigga got here through a virgin who never had sex and she was married. And an angel impregnated her. So why can I not just say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Mother? That's, that's too much like right, right? So the Holy Spirit is the, the feminine energy of creation. So that's the three, the Holy Trinity. You can also look at the Holy Trinity as, you know, yourself, your higher self, the most high, or the most high, your highest consciousness, your ancestors. What is your Holy Trinity? Redefining that under this phase that we are in right now. Where are you having to reparent yourself? I spoke with a friend this week and we were talking about how motherhood forces you to reparent yourself. And they don't ever talk about that. They talk about, oh, it's going to be hard. They're going to grow up fast. It's going to be, you know, sleepless nights. They don't ever talk about how reparenting yourself comes with parenting, period. So what part of yourself are you having to reparent? It will be brought to the surface this week as well because it's trying to create happy home, happy home. And I love how it's like these two moon energies. It's the two moons. It's the past, the present, the future. The you know, and then we're the bridge in between all of it, and and giving way and giving light to that. Um, another energy is water. So we will have a lot of water energy because Aquarius is the water bearer this week, who can pour water on it and wash these things away. And then we will end the week with the moon in Pisces. 
um, we still have Venus and Pisces, Saturn is in Pisces. It's still, you know, sometimes you can't go to the beach and get in the water. You have to sit on the edge of the of the beach and watch the ocean do what it does. Sometimes the tide is so high that all you can do is watch and witness it. Y'all, look at this. Even this water card has two discs. Two. Two. I was supposed to, oh, it's the duality. Codependency. 15 is, is the number, but codependency. And with these twos, are you too codependent on the validation of somebody else? Are you too codependent on a relationship? Are you too codependent on your escape um, mentalities and mechanisms? And with all this Piscean energy that we have, even though it's Aries season, all this Piscean energy, there's five planets of Pisces right now. I think it's Venus, Saturn, Mars, Mercury, and Neptune. Are you too dependent on your ooh -wee? Are you too dependent on the drink? Are you too dependent on the SEX? Are you know like what are you too dependent on that's maybe even driving you a little bananas and driving you away from your creative expression? Mm. We're in Aries season. Jupiter is in Taurus. We're moving towards Taurus season, and you really want to get your garden ready for the first Earth sign of the season. There might be some Taurus placements who need to get their shit together before your season comes in here. Um, North Node, Rising, Sun, Moon, Taurus placements. This is about generating the balance for yourself, getting your soil germinated and ready for whatever it is you're trying to plant. Again, that water, watering your seeds, watering yourself. You're beginning to realize who you are. <laughs> Because the solar eclipse, the sun, the sun, the solar eclipse on April 8th is really going to illuminate just how dope you are. You're going to realize that, again, we're not all caught, cut from the same cloth. We don't all have the same purpose. None of us have the same purpose. But some people can't even be a part of your journey because their purpose is so different. So it's important that you protect that light. I said that a couple of weeks ago. As you rise, people can see that you're rising. You got to protect that light. Don't fall for the okie doke. The magician is in the house. Uh, so maybe somebody is having to be their own healer at this point. And that could be an energy healer. That can be a physical healer. Like you may have, you know, something that you are dealing with as far as an illness that's helping, that you're helping yourself. And remember, as you're helping yourself, you're helping others. This card has something stuck to it. The card has a, stuck, a card stuck to it. Fire. Airy season. Solar. Eclipse. Build up. Roller coaster. Build up. This even looks like a roller coaster ramp. Um, water and fire cancel each other out. So, you know, Mars is like a fiery planet, but people who have Mars and cancer, um, are not controlled by the inner fire because the water is so powerful in cancer that it douses the fire out. So that's why there can be no, um, logistics. There can be no planning. There can be no, well, let me think outside of my emotional compass. You know, we will just wash it away. That's Mars and cancer. That's why it's really important for Mars um, and cancer people to work and, and establish and be diligent when Mars is in Scorpio, their fellow water sign, but it's the ancient ruler of Scorpio. I don't know who that helps. Embracing your truth. Embracing your truth, no matter who you have to leave behind. You're trying to build a happy home. That's the center of our focus. You're trying to build a happy home and you will have to rebirth yourself, reparent yourself, realize that your parents, even your mother, is just a portal for you to get here. You, you know, you chose her maybe for her qualities. When when they when you were in the Akashic Records, you may have chosen your mother for her qualities. But if you and your mother don't get along too well, or you've had to seek uh, maternal influence other spaces, you just use her as a portal so you could get back on earth, so you could get back to your mission. The same is true even if you get along with your family, even if you love your family. As you begin to heal and you begin to seek your truths and you begin to try to build your own happy home and become the magician in your life and set fire to the things that no longer serve you and let the waters wash it away, you're going to have to realize that everybody else is not on guard with it or they're not on the plan with it because that's not their purpose. And you can't be mad about it. And that doesn't make you any worse or any better. Aries is the final energy. I'm pulling out this deck. Crazy. Crazy. Aries sees it. Mercury retrograde in Aries tomorrow. Solar. Aries. Eclipse. <laughs> in next week. Come on, spirit. I didn't, we didn't look to see what our chakra focus is for the week. So let's see. 
what that is. For you and I. Have y'all been listening to the new Beyonce? I love it. I love it. I like some country music. I live in Texas, so I'm not from here, but I live here. And I've been here for a while. So you have no choice but to have some sort of appreciation for country music once you live in the South, right? She's doing the fool with this album, y'all. She's doing the fool with this album. Again, on my Patreon, we are going to dive into the decode of it all, the symbolism of it all. But surface level, just appreciate the body of music for what it is. Root Chakra, complacency is our focus for the week, and it's red, coupling with this fire energy that we have. Bottom of the deck is our final, uh, is our focus energy um, as well. Throat chakra, bittersweet. Codependency. Chakra, red chakra, root chakra, ancestral chakra. Complacency is the, is the card. Okay, so it says, life force energy must be taken seriously. Are you standing tall in your own dreams or are you trying to build someone else's? Sadness and an inability to disassociate from a lost dream can show up here. It is time to walk away from anything that does not deeply resonate with you. Release and be free. The story itself says, at the end of her life, Flo reflects on the dream she shared with her late husband to move to Florida. They never went. After Flo dies, her, her daughter discovers that her parents had enough money to move there. As she plans what to do with her inheritance, she wonders why her parents never lived their dream. The root chakra is your ancestral chakra. Sometimes your ancestors, not sometimes, a lot of times our ancestors will leave through us, will live through us. And that's why sometimes you get a download to create something, to be something, to go somewhere that maybe you weren't previously inspired to do, but it's literally your ancestors. And this is especially true after you start working with them, venerating them, erecting an altar for them. You will be able to work with the portal that they are coming through for you to, you know, achieve said things. Same is true when we talk about, you know, your ancestors using you for vices. So if they were an alcoholic, you may not want to have them on the altar or you may want to have hard boundaries to establish before you start working with them. But this daughter on this complacency card, the, the mom died without fulfilling the dreams and the daughter is wondering what she could have been. And although the dream may not be yours, allowing yourself to sometimes be used, you know, to see what you can be um, through a mechanism that was not always uh so clear to you can be surprising it says this is a warning not to give up beware of coasting along in any situation that is not what you really want you will never be fulfilled by the unmet uh, dreams of others that's another reason why we don't harp too much on celebrities they've already gotten to where they want to get they controlling the world through their music what do you want to be all of the energy that you put into the celebrity or to even the person the hater the anything outside of you you are spinning your wheels and not pouring it into yourself says, how can I redefine my dreams? How can I stop procrastinating? Those are two questions that we all should ask ourselves this week. How can I redefine my dreams and how can I stop procrastinating? It says, find self-nourishment. Stop leaving your dreams unrealized. If you're feeling de depleted, it is time for rest, but there is no time for lack of motivation or holding back. And then bittersweet, I believe that came up a couple of weeks ago. And if it didn't come up for the collective, it definitely came up for Patreon. It says, there is an inner strength here helping you to rise above the circumstances and do the right thing. It is time to set aside your personal agenda for the good of the group. The person you are becoming is capable of more than you imagined. The passing of all things is inevitable. Whatever is happening may require release. This card could also represent unexpected news. There are hidden blessings and celebration tempered by sadness, but you have an ability to honor others upon the new horizons. So again, bittersweet, just because some things are ending. I like how that complacency card says something about um, you feeling sad because you're chasing dreams that are outdated, that are gone. L-I-G it, bro. Like, sometimes you have to just let it go. Um, what's his name? Andre 3000 said a, a few months ago, realize what you are not good at too. So you will stop chasing that dream. That's true. When you realize you're not good at it, you'll stop trying to do it. And then you can be great at something else. We're going to use the Golden Girl Tarot because I don't feel like getting up and going behind this, <laughs> this curtain to get the other ones. So, spirits, what do you have for us here in the Trump House Collective this week? The underhanded will not go unhandled. 
seven of wands. See, the people who've been trying to play in your spirit, play in your energy, will not. You're you're still going to be on the mountain above them. You're still going to be a step ahead of them. They will not prevail, and they're also going to be getting their ass handed to them. So, be wary of that. If you were led to leave them alone a few months ago, and you may be, you know, just human energetically missing them now. Be wary of that because they are getting ready to get pulled into a storm and you don't want to be nowhere near that. Not the magician coming out twice because we have everything that we need to get through to this next level. The infinites. We have an infinite resource, infinite access to the resources that we are looking for. We have protection. We have our emotions, our intuition. We have our wand that creates worlds. We have our um, pentacles, our money, our resources to get where we are going. Again, we have everything. Do not complain. Sit a reflection of gratitude. Queen of Pentacles. We're sitting right in. Ooh, not with the rabbit at her fit. The mother, what did it say? The mother hair, the goddess hair, bearing the gold. Eclipse season, like I said a couple of weeks ago, is not to fear because you actually stand to receive some things that have been outdated and, and supposed to come to you. You actually stand the chance of being right in the uh, hemisphere of receiving some things that you've been previously working on. So that's why you shouldn't worry or, or be afraid of it. Because you're being returned to the throne. You have gone valiantly into the unknown. You've gone valiantly into the repair of self. And now you are going to receive those things. Let go of trying to figure it out. Let go of trying to figure out why you are where you are or like I posted on Instagram, stop trying to figure out where you went wrong and just start where you are. It's okay. It's okay that you made a mistake. It's okay that you fumbled. It's okay that you forgot who you were. But now let that go. Bad lady or oh man, you gonna break your back. Back, 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 Okay. Final energy is three of pentacles. Again, that holy trinity keeps coming up. That, that holy trinity is coming up. What is your holy trinity? We, we know that on the Golden Girls, their holy trinity was them. You know, it was four, really. But their holy trinity was them. What makes you find peace? What, no matter what is going on, brings you back to center to help you realize I'm still in control. Things are still working out for me. Things are still going in the way that they need to. The abundance is here, though. And there's also this eclipse also stands to bring in new alliances, new friendships, new connections and remember you can know somebody for 20 years and then meet somebody and know them for 20 months and then have better um intentions for your life so don't be a don't don't cut yourself off from your blessings just because somebody in your friend group or in your relationship group or even business or job or whatever previously smited you let's see what our final ingredients are for the week <laughs> Shine, your light irritates their demons. And again, this is the solar eclipse. You're going to realize you can't, you keep playing small, you're going to be playing wrong. I'm going to shuffle these good. Because I just did a reading a couple of days ago. I don't want none of these same cards to come up. None of them. Especially if your shine blinds them. Whatever gifts come with the eclipse, the fire, that Aries solar eclipse, whatever comes with that, going to demolish them. So, they little sunshades that they got to see the eclipse ain't even going to help. What I say? You have to let go of these. You have to let go of these. Karmic friends. Bad attachments. And, and that whole keep your enemies closer? Nah. Let them stay right where they is. They'll stay right where they is. But you want to stay up on the mountaintop. You want to stay up on the mountaintop so you can see them coming. Stop telling everybody everything you got going on. Keep it to yourself. I tell nobody else. <laughs> because why they playing? Why they trying to play with you? They need to be worried about getting their bills together. Instead of getting repoed. Okay? Memories, flashback, trauma, side effects. I just said, if you are feeling like, oh, well, we were such good friends or they were such a good lover or we did have some good times, you're just being haunted by the energy. 
especially if you've been in a love triangle, especially if somebody's been manipulating you or playing you or making you feel like you need to play um, backseat to somebody while somebody else plays shotgun or they making you feel like you are a choice, tell them to choose that person. If you got to make a choice, choose the other person. Again, this has been coming up for a couple of weeks and it's never even nothing to joke about, you know. Um, but somebody is, is worried about the wrong thing. Need to be worried about getting their house in order, getting their contracts in order. Um, they gonna, they're going to be mad because you might start posting a little bit more, showing yourself off a little bit more. They feeling like they getting evidence, but they really just getting sick because they, because now they're watching you even more. Happiness hater, quite literally. Okay. Shine on their eyes anyway. Obsessive lover. And remember, it's only cute when they want to protect you and just don't want nothing to happen to you. It's not cute when they take you away from your friends and your family and are physically trying to harm you. Like I've been seeing a lot of like negative things on TikTok, like with some of the couples that they have on there. The shit's not cute. So don't be influenced by that shit. Damn, they're getting evidence. That keeps coming up twice. Maybe you're get, getting evidence, you know, especially if you're going to court. You creeping in the, in the bounds, getting the evidence on who, who needs to um, get shown out or you need it needs to you know be seamless it needs to be flawless and it will be mm. maybe y'all trying to get some proof on who you may have got burned from or somebody's telling you that they have proof that someone is burned and you should watch your back you should watch your back if you've been on a break with somebody i would i would i would you might want to go get tested before you lay with them again if you're in late with them again, and you really shouldn't be. Final energy, they are they've been out here. And this could also be for y'all. You know, I'll try to try to act like my cousins is just like squeaky clean, but some of y'all could be out here kicking up dust. Bringing it back to yourself. And if you are, stop it. Bad habits, drugs, addictions, toxins. The the eclipse is a good time to do a cleanse if you are, again, like I said, with all that Neptunian energy trying to escape what's happening. If I just don't pay attention to it, then it won't be there. No, it'll be there and it'll be bigger. Um, and remember, love, dopamine, drugs are all the same thing. It's all the same chemical. So, and, and sometimes the best way to stop something is just going cold turkey. Because <laughs> you can't keep ignoring it. You can't keep ignoring it. You have to turn the eye to it. Yo, yo. If you have to go to rehab, go to rehab. If you have to just... Remember that your highest self is rooting for you and your highest self is not dependent on anything except for energy. Mm. Case of the fake people. Oh, oh, yeah. Final entry, dust it off. So this week itself, it seems like it's going to be very energetically... dynamic <laughs> because things are going to be changing at a core on a core level and we ain't even got to the eclipse yet we're not even at the eclipse yet so we're on the roller coaster of a build don't fight for your conditions don't try to fight against gravity when you're on the um roller coaster just let it ride let it plummet into your new life so this concludes the session. Y'all have a good week. I will see y'all next week. Love y'all. Holla back.